Welcome. Thanks for sticking around and being patient with us. So we have um, we have four lightning talks today. Um, first, we're going to have the UNVT portable, which we're going to start with in just a minute. Then we have uh, liaising OSM community and research community. Uh, we have OSM training for high schools, and we have uh, the Philippines NOAA website revamped in that order. So uh, speakers, please be ready to come, to come to the stage. It's going to be five minutes without Q&A. If we have time after, we can do a little discussion and Q&A, but the lighting talks will just be one after the other. So please enjoy. Hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, Bonjour. Uh, my name is Taichi from Japan, and uh, I'm Shogo. Yes. Today, uh, we would like to uh, share about our uh, UNVT portable. So, uh, and. Uh, First, I have to share about our activity. That, uh, so, our activity uh, related to United Nations, the name is United Nations Vector Tile Toolkit. That is a um, kind of project. And uh, so, UN OpenGIS initiative is a, a network, uh, each UN organization uh, department with the uh, company side, university side, and the community side. Anyway, uh, every month we share the how to use that uh, open source geospatial technique and tool or how to make data or something. Anyway, the UN OpenGS initiative uh, had uh, uh, totally five working group and our activity uh, defined at the uh, uh, working group for geodata collection. And uh, so, and also working group four uh, divided uh, six uh, uh, project. So uh, our activity, UN uh, UN Vector Tile Toolkit, uh, defined uh, the number six uh, project. So, and uh, our activity uh, based on that GitHub, and uh, that is an open source project. So you, maybe you can join to uh, our uh, GitHub organization too. And uh, so UNVT is a kind of uh, open source uh, geospatial tools components. And uh, so this tool, vector tile uh, toolkit, so we, we, how to make vector tile tool data set, uh, that process is uh, importing and producing and style, how to make style data uh, related to the example, we, if you want to make uh, vector tile data, so we can use a typical new tool or something. And if you want to uh, uh, define the style data, so we can use a map technique or uh, carry test. And also we are we can hosting a vector tile data with a storytelling tool, and sometimes we can optimize. So anyway, this is a, a totally a UN vector tile structure, uh, latest version. And today we want to share about the host only hosting uh, process. So uh, let's start the, uh, this. So we produce now UN vector tile to uh, UN vector portable. This is the UN vector portable. Uh, the Unipot, uh, this is a, a package for in the Raspberry Pi. The function has a map hosting server and it can be freely accessed from the web, uh, web browser. So what is the purpose? So we are, we are from the Japan, so Japan is having a lot of disasters. So this, this year is also the big earthquakes happened. So big earthquakes happened, so we're a team of Dombers. So Dombers is a, a, a disaster that happened, so we're flying the dome. Uh, can I get uh, taking a photo and uh, the situation of a disaster? After that, so installed the uh, like imaginary. Uh, it is taking the photo of the like drone. So installed this uh, web server based on Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's uh, this web server can combine the last time and the vector tile. After that, so given uh, given this uh, web server to the like uh, municipal officer. So they can see you know, uh, like web web map uh, uh, flying environment. So this uh, built that set based on uh, op OSM Open Street Map. So please install with the as as a tile data set and so as I said, DOM uh, uh, aerial uh, photo and data a shelter and a hazard map data web maps can be uh, built on offline offline environment. So during this uh, on dealing disaster. So, uh, hosting using the software such as Apache and the map, uh, also the, using the map library to create a map, map file. So, this is an important point is everything is compare, uh, composed by all uh, open source software. 
So is, there's no special skill or tools are required, just scanning the QR code. And so, uh, so Raspberry Pi is so low cost but a uh, high performance. So it is, uh, it can be, uh, it, it can be mass uh, produced in preparation for uh, uh, natural disaster. So first, uh, scanning QR code to access the your smartphone to the Raspberry Pi. After the second QR code, uh, scanning uh, scanning uh, QR code, I don't uh, can see a uh, web map. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, after that, so we can see now uh, we can discuss about uh, uh, using the web map uh, in offline environment. Yeah, this is our repository. This is a UN project. It is open source. And now uh, we submitted the poster. Yep. Yeah, uh, when I when I finish this presentation, please look at this poster. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, please come up to them if you have questions. We're going to go right straight to the straight to the next speaker. OSM community and resource community. Hello, everyone. I am Irene Akhtar, everywhere she maps regional ambassador, Yacht Mappers, and she is. Hi, everyone. I'm Shraddha Sarma, Yacht Mappers Research Fellow. Today, we are going to talk about how to liaise OSM community, research community with the policymaker. So we all know that disaster cause damages to the community where disaster management is the process to prepare the community to deal with these damages. In this regard, OSM community can play a vital role to collaborate with research community, policymaker to make a better disaster management plan. Now, how to make this collaboration? We need to reach policymakers, but before that, we need to have a consent data in OSM. In our study, we explore disaster responses activities on OSM, and we found a lot of changes in Nepal after Nepal earthquake 2015. So one of the most effective methods to make disaster management action plans more suitable is to include collaboration between policymaker research and the OSM community. So in our studies, we explored literature reviews in the field of disaster management. We also took interviews some of the policymaker disaster management research communities and OSM community. We also searched OSM activities tagged with cyclone, disaster response, and policymaker on OSM platform. Now, Shodha is going to share our findings and recommendations. From the literature review, we found out that there hasn't been much research about the uses of OSM in policy making. From the interview, we got to know that policymakers are not that aware about OSM and its community. There has been a few initiation, but use of OSM in policy making hasn't been prioritized. The accuracy and precision of the OSM data has been frequently questioned, and the most organizations involved in decision making are using their own data sets. We also looked out for the trends using, using the tags and comments in OSM platform. We calculated the chain set and the number of contributors using results map. And the, uh, and the number of chain set was searched by the term disaster and policy. And, it, and it's the trend from last 30 days. We are suggesting few steps to bridge the gap between policy make makers, research community, and OSM community. Initiating idea sharing session discussions between the communities, ensuring the accuracy of OSM data, increasing the research in uses of OS OSM data in disaster response and policy making. You <clears throat> using hashtag and 
additional uh, additional text in extra tag while inputting the information in OSM platform. Thank you. We really appreciate your valuable feedback to bridge the gap between the communities. You can uh, you can reach out to us with uh, through email and LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you both. Figures up next. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, Victor Sondi is my name uh, from Unique Map Pass Network, Nigeria. That's the OpenStreetMap community in Nigeria. As a small team uh, affiliated with Youth Map Pass, and uh, we discovered that so many people were so interested and enthusiastic about uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. And uh, we just had to mobilize everyone. We kept on mobilizing. And then uh, uh, in 2018, uh, we got a microgram from uh, uh, HOTS. And that triggered ripples of uh, community expansion beyond uh, University of Port Harcourt, where we started across uh, different states in Nigeria. And so we now have. Uh, the OpenStreetMap community NGO known as Unique Mapas Network. And so we are providing the capacity for open data development, where uh, mobile data collection and uh, open source geospatial technology. And so we also engage everyone in participatory citizen science. Yeah, so that's our mandate providing a humanitarian response and community development. And so we have about seven areas uh, we uh, engage our community using the open street map for open, uh, open mapping, mobile data collection, open source geospatial empowerment. Uh, we also run a flying lab and then uh, participatory citizen science, gender equality, and so on. Uh, so far, in the last five years, uh, this year is our uh, uh, fifth year anniversary. So we just celebrated that. And in these past five years, uh, we've been able to uh, engage more than 5,000 volunteer mappers in Nigeria uh, to map more than 1.5 million buildings. And currently, we're engaging a project uh, called a satellite imagery for social good project uh, for social good, uh, which uses the uh, Microsoft uh, map with AI. And so we are driving at that 8 million uh, building footprint in the Northeast. Uh, currently also, uh, we've been able to engage uh, humanitarian response for flood, uh, covering about eight uh, local governments uh, in Nigeria, and then uh, so many other things uh, we've been doing. And so, uh, what are our challenges? Uh, yeah, lack of funds for to host workshop and conferences so that volunteers can learn more. Yeah, we uh, this year uh, we are listed as one of the UN summit uh, 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 community, and so we'll be planning to host. Uh, a conference, and that will be State of the Map Nigeria conference in November. So we will need your support. Yeah, effective local part, uh, partnership and uh, stakeholders engagement, and then uh, getting our volunteers, giving stipend paid. You know, when you engage volunteers in uh, activities and so on without motivating them, it's not quite easy. Yeah. That's our strategy plan for the next five years and so on. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to do that. Wonderful. Thank you, Victor. Thank you all. Uh Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Faye from the Philippines and I'm representing Youth Mappers and also I'm a part of the WebGIS team from the UPRI NOAA Center. And um, in this talk, I will be talking about the Philippines NOAA website, uh, the, rev the revamped NOAA website, and I will highlight how open data and how open data such as open sheet map data are used for disaster mitigation efforts in the Philippines. 
So just a quick background about uh, NOAA. So NOAA stands for Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards. And we seek to assist the country, including the local government units in disaster risk reduction and management, climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts through different researches, development work and extension services. So in 2016, we released the first version of the NOAA website, and it features different weather and climate information, including the hazard maps, such as uh, for floods, uh, landslides, and storm surges. And we also have different um, weather satellite information, uh, including the Himawari satellite images that can be used for um, storm monitoring in the Philippines. And uh, why the revamp? So our vision are to improve the performance of the map layer rendering on the website and also to improve the overall experience or user experience and ex interface of the web website because uh, we've seen uh, in the previous website that uh, the map layers are very slow in, in terms of the rendering. So we wanted to improve that and also to, to minimize the technical jargon and ach achieve clear science communication for the communities. And lastly, to encourage active participation from the community as well. And uh, last year, uh, we released the version, uh, the beta version of the revamped NOAA website, and we maintained the features that we had from the old website, and we added uh, more features such as uh, the Know Your Hazards page, where the users can input their location and assess whether their um, area is, ex is exposed to different types of hazards, such as floods, landslides, and storm surges. And we also added a page for our blog and for the downloads page, where people can um, download the hazards information from the website. So um, since we've been experiencing different map la uh, layer rendering issues from the old website, we did a lot of changes in the revamped NOAA website. So before we used um, open layers and GeoServer, but through our community partnership with Mapbox, we used uh, Mapbox map services. And from the, for the front end, uh, we used JavaScript and HTML in the old website. Then we used Angular and um, Tailwind for the front end in the new website. And for the back end, we're using Python and AWS services. And also we're using the resources from the university um, to host our servers and different um, information. And lastly, of course, we use uh, the OpenStreetMap data for the critical information and, all, and for the exposure data in the Philippines. It, and since we recognize that feedback from our target users, including the local government units, researchers, including the uh, local community from the Philippines, um, we invited them for a design review in the NOAA revamp process. And we also encourage community part participation in NOAA. That's why we are encouraging people to validate our hazard maps and adding building footprints and critical facilities in OpenStreetMap. And in, since 2017, we've been um, working uh, directly with the OpenStreetMap Philippines community to map the build, building footprints and other critical facilities and road network in OpenStreetMap. And these are all integrated in the NOAA website where um, people can see uh, the building footprints and all exposure elements through a 3D view so that they can see whether the buildings are exposed to different um, types of hazards. And this is the Know Your Hazards page, page where people can already see the assessment of the exposure elements. And aside from that, we also feature the critical facilities which were extracted for, from OpenStreetMap. And we uh, largely um, thank Open, OSM Philippines for uh, maintaining and updating these types of data. And when we launched our website, um, we received a lot of positive feedback from the community, including the OSM Philippines. So yeah, if you want to know more about our website and our data, you can visit our Facebook, Twitter, and you can email us. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Impressive, impressive effort.